For anyone looking to make their own bolts and nuts in FreeCAD, this is the perfect tutorial for you. You want to start by opening up a new project and you want to go to Tools, Add-on Manager, and you want to go to the search and you want to search Fasteners Workbench and install it. The first thing that we're going to work on is the actual bolt itself. So we're going to click on this icon here to create a new body. We're going to select the body and we're going to press F2 to rename it and we're going to name this bolt. Now you want to go to where it says part design up here on this drop down and you want to go to the fasteners workbench. Once the fasteners workbench is open, you want to go to this icon here where it says add din threaded rod. You want to click on that once. To make things a little bit easier, we're actually going to make a variable set. So we're going to click on this icon up here, create a variable set. And the first property we're going to create is called thread size. And we're going to camel case it. And then I'm going to set the value to 25. And then I'm going to press OK. Now you want to click on the var set and we're going to rename this to threads. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to highlight our threaded rod object and we're going to go from M6 and we're going to go to custom instead where the diameter is and we're going to change the diameter custom to the variable that we just made in our variable set. And we can do so by highlighting the input text of the diameter custom and then clicking on this little icon on the right side and then we're going to put threads dot thread size and you can use your arrow keys to select it press enter and then press ok once you click off you should see the size change on the model now we're going to select the threaded rod again and we're going to go to length and we're going to change this to 11 millimeters and then we're going to go down to thread and we're going to change this to true and when you click outside, you should see all of the threads appear here, just like this. Currently, our model has way too many threads, so we're gonna tone that down a little bit. And so we're gonna highlight our threaded rod object, and we're gonna go to Pitch Custom, and we're gonna change this to 1.75. Essentially, the higher the number, the less threads there will be on the model. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag and drop our threaded rod model onto the bolt object. And now you can see it creates this other object called Base Feature. Now we need to go back to the part design workbench at the very top on the drop down. Go to part design and then we're going to click on the very top surface of our base feature and we're going to create a new sketch. What you want to do now is you want to select create circle by center and you want to make a circle at the very center point of the model and we're going to make this a little bit bigger than the actual threads themselves so we're going to make this 30 millimeters. Now we can press close on the left side or press escape with the sketch selected we're going to pad this and i'm going to pad it around three millimeters in order to make sure that this prints correctly we're going to make sure that the two surfaces are bound correctly so we're going to go over to this drop down on pad we're going to go to sketch we're going to go to the drop down where it says attachment offset position and then we're going to change the z value to minus 0 0.5 millimeters and you should see it move down just a little bit and our bolt is officially done. You can go around, you can modify however you'd like. Now we can move on to creating the nut. Now we're gonna go over here to create body. We're gonna create a new body and we're gonna rename this to nut. We're gonna go to our original threaded rod that's hidden. We're gonna press copy and we're gonna make sure that we don't copy the variable. We only wanna copy the thread, press okay. And then we're going to right click again, or you can press control V and we're just going to press paste. Now we have another object here that has 001 attached at the end of it. We're going to hide the bolt and we're going to unhide the threaded rod 001. We can click on the eyeball here or while we have it selected, we can press space bar. What we're going to do while we have the thread selected is we're going to go down to diameter custom. We're going to click on this variable icon. And we're going to add between 0.5 and 1 millimeter to the thread size. This way, there's a little bit more clearance for the threads to actually fit onto the nut. So we're going to just put plus 1 millimeter at the end of this. And you can see it's now 26 millimeters. Press OK. If you click outside of it, it should be bigger. We're going to select the nut object. And then we're going to go to create a new sketch. And we're going to create a new sketch on the XY plane. We're going to do the same thing as we did for the bolt. We're going to go to create circle by center. And you know you're at the very center point of something when you see this little X icon. So if I move here, you can see the X goes away. If I go here, the X is there. 
we're going to make this one 28 millimeters. Now we can go to close or we can press escape and we're going to pad this as big as we want to. We're just going to do five millimeters in this case. You can make it smaller or bigger. The next thing that we need to do is move the nut down because we're going to make a cut using these threads. So we're going to go to the nut and we're going to right click it and go to transform. And we want to put it somewhere around the center of the actual threads. If moving the object up and down was too little or too much, you can always adjust the translation increment. So I can adjust this to five millimeters and then you can see it moves a lot more. In my case, one millimeter seems to work the best. So you can see just like this. Now we're just going to press OK. Now we need to select both the nut and we need to select this threaded rod. So we're going to click on the nut and then we're going to press control and then we're going to click on the threaded rod. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the part workbench and then we're going to press this cut. Now you want to make sure that the first one you have selected is the nut that we created first, because that's what's going to get cut with these threads. So we're going to press cut and then you should see your threads. And now if you unhide the bolt, you can see it within the actual nut. And so these are both ready to print. In order to export these models as an STL, we're going to click on each one of them and then we're going to press control E or we can go to file and we can go to export. And then I'm going to save this one as bolt. I'm just going to go down to cut and then I'm going to press control E and then I'm going to save this one as nut. And now we're taking this over to bamboo studio. I'm going to be printing this with the bamboo lab P1S. So I'm going to go to file import, import three MF, etc., And I'm going to select these two. And then you see load these files as a single object, press no. Now we're going to click outside of it and then we're going to drag them separately. The next thing we're going to do is click on this lay on face button while we have the uh, bolt selected, or you can press F and then select the top face. And this is how we're going to print it. Since I'm working with the 0.4 nozzle, these are the settings that I usually use. So I'll change this to 0.16 millimeters optimal, and then I'll change the outer wall to 100 and I'll change everything else to 200 millimeters per second. The reason why I recommend these settings is because you might experience some weird stringing where some layers are trying to attach to one another and you'll see a large piece of filament trying to attach from one side to the other. So slowing down the print and doing it at a lower layer height definitely helps with that. From here, you can slice the plate and print it with whatever filament that you'd like to. And that concludes the tutorial. So if you guys can, if you enjoyed the video, definitely give it a thumbs up, definitely subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or suggestions, definitely put them down in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video.